The severe weather threat is moving into the deep south, into the southern plains. What's going on, guys? Certified meteorologist Jonathan Kegg is back with you. Before we get into the video, I just want to say we're thinking about everybody that were impacted by the severe thunderstorms and tornadoes over the last 48 hours. The scenes are devastating. Just take a look at this video. This coming in from Logan County in central Ohio. Some of the hardest hit areas of the severe weather episode, the tornado outbreak of the 14th into the 15th of March. And again, we are thinking about you guys that have to clean up certain Certainly there was loss of life as well. So just know that here at the channel, we are thinking about you guys. Unfortunately, the threat from that same system is not over. And we are going to talk about the timeline here for those impacted. We do have a level three out of five enhanced risk for parts of Texas. And this severe weather threat extends to the east coast of the U.S. as well. Then we're going to talk about the hail chart, the size chart. So if you are a storm spotter, you know how to kind of characterize hail to the National Weather Service for official storm reports. But if you don't, by the end of this episode, you're going to know what size hail corresponds to the proper at home object if you will to send in the proper storm report and then we're going to have kind of the conclusion here to our long range forecast that we made back in February the cold it's coming it's going to blast into the eastern two thirds of the US and Canada we're going to have that at the end of the video if you do want to stay updated on all things weather severe weather as you move into that season and then eventually hurricane season you come to the right place please hit that subscribe button for us and if you happen to find value in this content would love it if you hit that thumbs up I'd also love to know where you're tuning in from and what the weather is doing where you are. Post in the comments where you're watching from, and we are going to get to it. Thank you guys for being here. Thank you to all the new subscribers for hanging out with us and talking weather with us. That's why I love this channel. All right, so the worst of the worst here, it's going to be coming through South Central Texas. So for us into San Antonio, into Houston, including Corpus Christi, just south of Austin here, the yellow shaded area is a two out of five, and that really consists of Panama City, Florida, into Biloxi, south of New Orleans, right along the North Gulf Coast, and then down through Corpus Christi, and then right to the border with Mexico, where we're watching the potential for some of that gargantuan hail, the gorilla hail, as it's known all across social media, right here through San Antonio. There could be some really, really big hail. There's also a tornado threat with that, but the main threat today is this really insane huge hail and that's why we're going to take a look at that hail chart coming up in just a couple of minutes uh the severe weather threat also going to extend south of atlanta into albany georgia charleston we're just outside of that but again nasty storms all through that line and all through the deep south and into the southern plain so here we go this event is really going to pick up over the next couple of hours on friday march 15th the time on your screen there at the top of the banner is local time so again i wanted to give you this high resolution uh timeline here so that you can plan your afternoon you can plan your evening and you know when to be weather aware again a lot of nasty stuff unfortunately happened last night so have a way to get your watches and warnings the hail can be really damaging and deadly when it's expected to be this big so here we go these big individual guys these are supercells and these darker yellows especially darker reds and purples those are the intense hail cores being forecast here by the high resolution future radar so all around houston look at that big big cluster of big hail producing thunderstorms and then it expands through san antonio right along south central texas uh, right along the mexico border we have another cluster here around lake charles and pushing pushing to the east and then you saw that kind of weird bow echo shape again potential for some damaging winds tornadoes and some big hail heading toward Brownville, Brownsville heading into Corpus Christi as well later on this evening before things fizzle back out so that was your close-up view I also have a view for the rest of this uh, severe weather event for us from Louisiana and then points to the east you see it here it's more elongated we have scattered thunderstorms all through the deep south from Louisiana New Orleans and Hattiesburg Monroeville through Columbus and then those darker hail cores pop up the lavender colors again and anytime these storms get to be isolated or individual out ahead of the main line that's when we can produce some really nasty thunderstorms that's when we can produce some of those big prolific hailstones out there that can cause the big time damage so we're going to be watching that there's nine o'clock tonight i think by nine ten o'clock the severe weather threat winding down for that first wave there or that eastern wave as it kind of fizzles out into the night and you see it kind of erode as it heads uh, closer to north florida into southeast georgia around the jacksonville uh new brunswick area so watching that closely again from really about uh 
Waynesboro into the Panhandle of Florida and then back into here. And then, of course, South Central Texas, where I showed you before. So, again, make sure you have a way to get your warnings as this is another very juiced system that we're going to see here. All right. So if you do come across this very, very big hail, there is a way to categorize it. And I know one of the popular ways is to say marble hail. That's great. Certainly, we get the hail the size of marbles by like that big, but the problem is marbles do come in all shapes and sizes. So, this is the proper way to do it. I'll get my head out of the way again. The sub severe, you're talking about three quarters of an inch of hail if you have a ruler to measure, is about the size of a penny. The severe hail starts when you get to the size of a quarter. We all know what that is, and that's when we're talking about one inch or greater. That's when we start to have damage, at least the potential for damage. And then it's really once you start to get two inches or bigger that some of that gorilla hail as you get into that baseball size hail especially softball four inches that's the destructive stuff as you get into again baseball tennis ball size hail and above that is going to cause significant damage that can be fatal if you are outside in that again want to make sure that you are inside in any kind of thunderstorm sometimes when these events get so intense like this even if it's not a tornado warning uh, on this event on march 15th treat every single severe thunderstorm warning today as a tornado warning certainly the potential is there for tornadoes but the big hail is going to be the main threat and that could be uh cause considerable damage uh for us in the southern plains and parts of the deep south all right had request to revisit our long range forecast here that's becoming not so long range anymore it arrives next week i'm talking about the 18th 19th 20th 21st early next week as we get into that third week of march as expected big dip in the jet stream coming down again it's one of the reasons why we're starting to see these nasty thunderstorms the jet stream is turning wavy this is the start of that major pattern change that we've been highlighting for several weeks now but there's that ridge out west and then here's the trough in the east. Again, that is a very active storm track. It's the track that we wanted for snow in the northeast back in January and February. I think it's a little too late, too little too late. And, and I don't think the moisture matches up with the cold to get a lot of snow up here over the next week or so. But there is the colder air that's plunging down. You see it in the blue and purple. Those are the lower heights. We're looking at the height chart here. The colder collars you see are the lower heights. Lower heights equate to colder temperatures that plunge down the eastern two-thirds of the country. All right, so what does that mean for us in terms of how it's going to be outside? Here we go, Monday, March 18th at 7 o'clock in the morning. We'll wake up to temperatures around 20 degrees in Minneapolis. Certainly, that's much, much colder, believe it or not, than where we've been. My friends in Minnesota know that it's been relatively warm. Uh, 31 in Pittsburgh. We're talking about 70s still hanging on in parts of Florida. 71 in Orlando. Toronto, we are at 0 degrees Celsius, 1 degree Celsius in Montreal. There's some of that cold, 18 degrees below below zero in terms of Celsius, just south of the Hudson Bay. You see the blues start to plunge. And I want to be clear about something, too. This is a cold blast relative to normal. So we're not talking about crazy below zero temperatures invading the Northeast by any means. But when everybody wants to start spring, it's been a mild winter. And then you get this. It's kind of ugly. Look at that. You're waking up to temperatures in Pittsburgh, 26, Detroit, 27. 27 in Syracuse. That's going to be Tuesday, March 19th. Look at this. 44 degrees in Jacksonville. That's when the chill arrives into the southeast corner of the U.S. Look at that. By Wednesday, March 20th, 7 o'clock in the morning, you're starting your day in Orlando in the mid to upper 40s. So it is going to be a nice bite to the air, especially as uh, this weekend, again, the weekend of St. Patrick's Day, you're talking about temperatures pushing 90 degrees across the Florida Peninsula. It is going to be really, really warm this weekend. And then a blast of cold. Look at that. The cold still kind of hanging on into the northeast as we move from Wednesday into Thursday as well. Alrighty, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you found this content helpful, please hit that thumbs up button. Small ask, but it does help us out a lot. Again, I'd love to know where you're tuning in from. We'll have an update on the eclipse as we get into April. Of course, we have the full video on the timeline of the eclipse. We're going to get into the weather. I'm going to overlay the clouds on top of that 3D pass so you know what to expect a week leading out. And if we're going to be able to see the eclipse, of course, we need clear skies. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. If you want to hang out with us in our growing weather community, hit that subscribe button, and we will catch you next time.